Spokane listens when business talks. Welcome to Business Talks, the region's only local business talk show with your host, Ryan McNeese. Business Talks is brought to you by our friends at STCU and Well-Dressed Walrus. Now, let's get down to business with Business Talks. Welcome to Business Talks. I'm Ryan McNeese, and we're here in the studio with Dr. Jacob Brooksby, new dean at Gonzaga Law School. Uh, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Great to be here. A uh, lot on your plate right now, making a big move. Uh, college at William & Mary, uh, graduate school at University of Virginia, and recently coming from uh, University of Duquesne. Uh, tell me about what it's like to land here in Spokane and, and start over here with Gonzaga Law School? Well, it's been a wonderful transition for us. So we moved from Pittsburgh uh, about five weeks ago now. And it's just been phenomenal being in a place that has low humidity, blue skies, no traffic. Uh, these are all things that <laughs> I was not used to coming from the No traffic, even seaboard. Spokane individuals, we complain about traffic. Now, <laughs> I so. joke when I'm late that I've run into traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I wait for people to call my bluff. Yeah, or laugh, or you can't <laughs> tell if they're serious or not. Yeah. Uh, what are, as you embark on this uh, new transition, uh, Gonzaga Law School has been through a lot of trials and tribulations, and uh, I can attest that folks that have been there in the last uh, 10 years have done an amazing job to, to weather the storm nationally, locally, in terms of law schools, overall application to graduate mm -hmm. schools. Uh, so as you embark on this the new mission with Gonzaga Law, what do you foresee as uh, some of the immediate issues to tackle? Sure. Well, first of all, I, I want to say I, I think the school's in a terrific place right now, and that's a testament to the leadership of my predecessor, mm -hmm. Dean Jane Korn, who did Absolutely. a phenomenal job of yep. weathering the storm, as you put it. So there have been some major shifts and changes mm -hmm. in legal education in the national market over the past 10 years, and Gonzaga has, uh, like all schools, been a part of, of those uh, shifting dynamics. And the one is the demand for a JD mm -hmm. education. Um, We've seen over the past 10 years the number of LSAT takers, LSAT, so that's the test you have to take to become eligible to go to law mm -hmm. school, has gone down by about 50%. Uh, at the same time, if you look back historically, going back to 1980, we have 20 more law schools nationwide. So you have more law schools competing for fewer students. Right. And <clears throat> so everyone has had to um, be creative, I think, mm -hmm. in, in finding ways to uh, right-size their operation. And so Gonzaga was no different in going through some of those challenging times. The good news is we are in a very excellent position right now, a sustainable position. We have a phenomenal faculty, and our programs are really flourishing. So I'm uh, excited about where we are. Well, I think you make a good point, Jacob, that some of the issues that were occurring at Gonzaga Law from a strategic standpoint weren't uh, unique to Gonzaga. As you indicated, it was a national issue right. with a 50% reduction in some of the graduate school and or law school apps. So uh, it did appear Gonzaga really uh, stepped up to make some strategic moves to be in a good spot, as you're indicating they are now. Absolutely. And, and one of the uh, benefits is that we are in this beautiful part of the state by ourselves without any mm -hmm. close direct competitors nearby. <clears throat> so we can be a leader in the region quite naturally in providing attorneys Right. Uh, in our region, but also nationally building on a reputation uh, as a Jesuit institution, as an institution committed to social justice. These are real selling points, particularly as students look at other options that may be public law schools. Well, and I think you've mentioned, uh, I, I would say one of the uh, key issues that you're interested in, in promoting is uh, having the law school and faculty, administration, students, et cetera, reach into the community, if you will, and create a, an engagement or dynamic. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about so that. So I think the, you know, the challenges for law schools historically can really be traced back to um, they kind of built themselves as palaces that mm -hmm. were isolated from the rest of of the universities in, of which they were a part. Right. Hmm. And they did this because there were, there were so many students going to those law schools that they didn't have to concern themselves with the rest of the university. And, and for faculty and administrators mm -hmm. at those law schools, the university began and ended with the law school. Those days are behind us. 
And, you know, in my background, I have a, a degree in education in addition to a law degree. So I'm very interested in how the pieces of higher ed kind of fit together. Right. That and access. I think it's, there's, there's so many opportunities here to bring Gonzaga better into the university community, more fully into the university mm -hmm. community. Uh, so we're starting to do that in terms of putting on collaborative programming, thinking of interdis interdisciplinary um, events that we can host and, and collaborate on together. Yeah. So that's one aspect of it. The other is uh, law schools that have been isolated from their communities hmm. tend to suffer in the long haul. And fortunately, we're not in that position. Gonzaga has always right. been uh, a, a flagship institution in this region and well known in this region. But I want to make sure that we continue to push our students, our programming, our faculty out into the community as much as possible. And you mm -hmm. see that through our clinical work. You see that through some of the educational events that we put on on campus. And we're going to start doing things actually downtown in Spokane. Uh, so in early October, I believe October 3rd, mm. we're going to have our third annual legal summit. And for the first time, this event is going to be downtown. So attorneys can easily uh, come and, and uh, participate in this event. It's actually going to be in the Spokane Club. I think it's, it's a great venue. Uh, but I, I, I think as you're describing that engagement, whether it is in Spokane or the other uh, areas that law schools are placed throughout the country, I think that is such an important factor yeah. uh, to bring uh, not only the community, but the different uh, industries that are prominent in a given town. Obviously, in Spokane, uh, the healthcare industry is one of our right. major employers, and uh, you've, you've spoken to that as well. Your spouse mm -hmm. is a physician. Uh, a, with the UW and Washington State and uh, University District, there's a, a good opportunity to create engagement there as well. Absolutely, and that's one of the things that drew me to this opportunity was the fact that this is a community mm -hmm. that has a lot to offer in terms of the legal community, the medical community, social services community, uh, the business community. These are all uh, vibrant parts of Spokane that we're mm -hmm. going to be tapping into and already have. Uh, we have obviously a relationship uh, that's been ongoing in right. the medical community and some that's collaborations sure. there. So all of these are things that I look forward to uh, kind of kicking into the next gear as we look into the next few years here at Gonzaga. Well, I, th I think another point you're making too is uh, whether a, a law school has set itself apart from the general population. And I think uh, to that point, uh, once the community understands uh, what type of talent and, and the scholars that are at Gonzaga Law and or the main campus, uh, I've found it interesting to really uh, look deeper at the individual faculty members that you have on the team. And it's very impressive, very diverse, not only nationally, internationally. But I, I do think that's an interesting point here in Spokane that isn't probably communicated enough is the talent that's on that team. Absolutely, and I see that as part of my job is to mm -hmm. kind of tell that story and to celebrate that story because you're absolutely right. We have a phenomenal array of faculty who are doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the, the typical faculty mindset that you do your work, right. but you're not necessarily in the business of promoting yourself and mm -hmm. getting the recognition that, that you know, folks in other lines of work would be, would be doing mm -hmm. when they're doing something really great. So I see that as part of my job to provide some of the attention uh, that should be going to our faculty for the uh, amazing things that they're doing. I'll give you an example. Professor Jason Gilmer mm -hmm. uh, wrote a book uh, that's out, has recently been published. We're going to have a book event for him in, in August. Um, no faculty member asks for a book event, right? right. You publish a book and right. you don't say, where is my book party? Right. Uh, but, but this is something we want to do to recognize him. His center, by the way, the Center for Civil and Human Rights, is off to an excellent it's start and really attracting a lot of national attention. On September 28th, we're going to have our uh, official opening and launch of the of the center with a full day symposium uh, at the law school. Members of the community are invited to attend that, and we have an all-star cast of of folks who are going to be coming and uh, participating in panel discussions throughout the day, keynote speeches, and dinners. Uh, so it's it's really shaping up to be quite something. Well, and I I think. Uh, Gonzaga Law, Gonzaga University are a microcosm for Spokane in the sense that great things are happening here in Spokane. Mm -hmm. Great things are happening on the main campus. Great things are happening at the law school. Uh, but I think, as you just pointed out, they're happening actually on a national level. They're mm -hmm. happening on a local level, national, and international level. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity to promote that, whether it be the faculty uh, or otherwise, is 
is exciting. You know, I think President Thay McCullough has done an excellent job in encouraging all of us to think big mm -hmm. and to think bigger. And we saw this in April. I was out here. Uh, it had just been announced that I was going to be the next dean, but we hadn't fully moved out here yet. But we came out for the uh, presidential speaker series. Right. And, of course, that's where Ronan Farrow and the founder of the Me Too movement mm -hmm. uh, participated. And I'm, we were immediately you know, blown away, my wife and I, by the fact that this is, these are nationally prominent people who are coming to Spokane mm -hmm. to participate in these educational events. And I think that just speaks to his vision for this university. I think so too. But it's, it's also a testament to the hard work of everyone, faculty and staff, who are so excited about these kinds of events. Um, we spoke a little bit about interdisciplinary collaborations, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to give an example of that. Uh, our School of Education and our law school are collaborating for, on an event on October 8th uh, that we're going to have in the Hemmingson Center that is, is tackling the subject of safety in schools. And it, you know, there could be no more important topic, I think, as we think to our K through 12 educational system. And so we're mm -hmm. gonna have a panel of speakers, uh, including from the legal perspective, but also a, a school teacher, a school superintendent, a school safety officer, uh, a, a address an audience that we're anticipating will be in the hundreds of people. And headlining that event is uh, a survivor of the Virginia Tech shooting uh, from over 10 mm -hmm. years ago who she's coming in to actually put a human face on this yeah, kind of tragedy. amazing credibility obviously. And, exactly and lead the discussion so I think it's going to be an excellent event but it's an example of the kinds of things that we're doing that I think can be of service to the mm -hmm. community and also deepen our connections uh, in other schools across campus and, and I think as you describe that I think what really stands out to me is uh, and what's exciting about the hope and excitement of the uh, of the law school is how you really are uh, creating that nexus between not only your passion as a, as a lawyer, but as you indicated, you also have a PhD, uh, and, and your passion for the legal education. Because to a certain extent, they can be two things. Uh, as a law school, you are in the business of providing legal education to folks that are going to take that education into nonprofit, governmental entities, private practice, but you yourself, have written a book and are passionate about creating and providing what these students need in this specific generation, which is different. Yeah. And I, I do want to note the actual title to the book. Uh, the book you wrote is The Branding of the American Mind, How Universities Capture, Manage, and Monetize Intellectual Property and Why It Matters. But uh, also Available at fine booksellers <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> including Amazon.com. <laughs> exactly. And, and then also the, uh, writing a treatise on the law of higher education, which is what right. we're talking about. We're talking about uh, how do you reach and engage with this next generation of students. Yeah. It, it isn't the student of 25 years ago necessarily, but blending right. that. So this is, I think you're putting your finger on, it's a story of innovation and change mm -hmm. in higher education. And higher education has often been rightly critiqued, I think, for mm -hmm. moving at a glacial pace. Right. Um, although we can't, we have to be careful about that analogy these days because yeah. some glaciers are going away exactly. rather quickly. But yeah, uh, you know, we have to innovate and rethink what we're doing in order to reach new mm -hmm. audiences and to prepare students for the future. Uh, the law is this, you know, black box mm -hmm. historical kind of concept. Yeah. And that's you know important that students learn about the history and evolution of sure. important legal topics. But we also have to be preparing them for what's coming tomorrow. Artificial intelligence is going to drastically change Absolutely. our practice, our profession, and the mm -hmm. world writ large. Mm -hmm. um, how are we preparing students to, to understand that? New technology. I was just yesterday in Tacoma in the law office of one of our alums. Mm -hmm. uh, this alum, this, this attorney's practice, it's about a five-person firm. They have no paper. They've gone completely, completely paperless. paperless. Everything it's is stored in the cloud. Yeah, it's, it's hard very hard to do. to do, but they're committed to doing it, and that's the future of, of law. And so we have to be thinking about these things, cognizant of these trends and changes as we think about mm -hmm. how we're educating students well, today. What's the phrase? We have to know history to be able to change it. And right. that's so true. You have to have, as you said, the... Uh, uh, you have to respect it. You have to have right. the respect for history to be able to uh, accommodate necessary change. Let's take a short break and come right back and uh, talk to Dr. Rooksby uh, about legal education. Uh, not only legal education, but the business of legal education. Thank you. 
Your home is unique, and you deserve an assessor that understands Spokane real estate home values. I'm realtor Leonard Christian, and I'm running to be your next county assessor. I served our nation for over 20 years in the United States Air Force and as a Washington State representative. I have the education, skills, and experience needed to be your next county assessor, and I encourage you to find out more at leonardchristianforassessor.com. People matter, and you deserve a leader who listens. It's time to elect Leonard Christian for Spokane County Assessor, paid for by Leonard Christian for Assessor. Hi, this is Kurt Stockwell with Well-Dressed Walrus. We are a local website design and development company here in Spokane. What we do is build beautiful, usable websites for local businesses. A website needs to be beautiful. It needs to be usable for your users, your customers, and yourself. Contact us anytime. We'd love to talk with you about your online marketing. The following is sponsored by our friends and community supporters at McNeese Wheeler Attorneys. McNeese Wheeler is a boutique law firm in Spokane, handling matters in both Washington and Idaho. Areas of law include business law, wills, trusts and estates, family law, personal injury and wrongful death, and real estate matters. For your full service legal needs, contact McNeese Wheeler Attorneys. The economy is getting stronger, banks are lending again, and interest rates are at historic lows. Now is a great time to buy your dream home. The caring and knowledgeable professionals at Homes for You have been helping people just like you for over 20 years. They take the time to listen to what you want and will help you find just the right home in Washington or Idaho. Real estate is what we do at Homes for You, 928-5782, or visit online at homes, the number 4, youspokane.com. Welcome back to Business Talks. I'm Ryan McNeese and Dr. Rooksby. We're chatting about legal education changes, the programs that are uh, bringing in those changes. Uh, tell me more about your strategy or ideas uh, to see this transformation at Gonzaga Law. Right. So one of the things that we're facing is that, you know, we have a declining number of students nationwide who mm -hmm. are interested in pursuing a JD. The JD right. is always going to be the flagship mm -hmm. uh, offering of any law school, including Gonzaga. But we have to start looking at other programs that we can offer that are of interest to students. Certificate programs, for example. So not, not necessarily a degree. Yeah, not, a certificate. not necessarily a degree. Um, you know, I make the analogy that uh, you know the law degree is like. You know, if we think about cars, it's we're selling somebody a car. It's a mm -hmm. very durable product that you can use to go mm -hmm. in any direction. How you right? want to use it sometimes is your choice. Exactly. Right. And, and But that's the nice thing about a car. You own a car, you can take it two miles, you can take it 2,000, mm -hmm. you can go northwest, wherever you want to go. Um, some students and, and, and some people who are in other walks of life in business, for example, they don't need a law degree. But what they need is a little bit of mm. legal education. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's like Uber. Yeah. Right. You just need a lift. I'm not yeah. looking to go from A to Z. I'm looking to go from A to C. Right. And can you help me get there? I don't need to buy the car. I, I just need some just in time education of a legal nature Absolutely. Uh, to help me get that promotion at work, to help me understand this changing market that I'm dealing with. Uh, to help me start my business, for mm -hmm. example. So one of the things that we're going to be doing is looking at what are some of the uh, opportunities mm -hmm. in the realm of certificate programs, for example, or continuing legal education uh, that we can provide to students who are not JD students. Yeah, I think that's critical. Yeah. And a couple of things that come to mind, obviously healthcare mm -hmm. being a, mm -hmm. a big industry in this region, healthcare compliance, uh, intellectual property law, of course, and uh, one thing that we're looking at, looking at mm -hmm. is wine law yeah. uh, because of the, the region's focus on agriculture and uh, growing notoriety for, for wine. Well, and I mean, just simply from a business standpoint, whether, as you indicated, whether you're talking about the healthcare industry, the wine industry, those certifications, the, uh, the elements of those respective industries are just as much business as any industry. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have the elements and, and fundamental uh, principles of business that you're either, whether it be a law student that you're providing those uh, certificates to, or I think as you're indicating, mm -hmm. 
folks coming from the community mm -hmm. that want certificates on campus. Exactly, and so I think a great uh, example of how this has really succeeded in another realm is our, our School of Leadership, hmm. uh, which has a number of, of certificate programs. They have one on uh, women in leadership that they have just advertised, and that my understanding from talking with the dean there is it has been oversubscribed, hmm. lots of interest uh, in that kind of program. Is it my understanding that there's a certificate a master's and a PhD program exactly. in leadership. Exactly, and I think that's a school, for example, where there are natural synergies to mm -hmm. draw into a legal uh, educational program. Right. Uh, I talked with students as I interviewed here who said, you know, I want to go start my own practice. Uh, law school has taught me the law, but what I need are the entrepreneurial skills, Absolutely. the leadership skills to really you know, uh, kick that into high well, gear. Well, and uh, Gonzaga has done this for quite a while, but you guys continue to uh, promote the joint MBA JD, right. which for the same critical reasons, whether you're going to be in that wine business, healthcare, et cetera. Exactly. Uh, yeah, law is an applied uh, profession, mm -hmm. so it, you have to know the law, but you have to know other industries and sectors of life Absolutely. as well. And for students who are coming right out of undergrad, who maybe haven't had that first job mm -hmm. experience, we have to provide some real-world education in law school that enables them to understand mm -hmm. uh, different industries and sectors that they may be coming into contact with. In, in other schools, like a business school and a leadership school, they do that already. So I really want to see us try to find ways to uh, break down barriers between and, disciplines. And integrate those respective programs. Yeah, yeah I, I, I see it, I believe, in private practice up close, that even if you break down even further the microcosm within a private practice in terms of whether it be family law, business litigation, business transactions, if you just would micro-focus on one of those, I don't think mm -hmm. you're doing a client justice, but rather all of those areas or genres of law interact. Well, what we're trying to do in all of education is cultivate curiosity. Mm -hmm. And what inspires me about our Jesuit mission is it's, it's cultivate that curiosity, educate the whole person, mm -hmm. and send them out to set the world on fire. And if we can do that, we're succeeding. And I think you're a great example of that, a lifelong learner. You practice law, but you also have this show. These are the kinds mm -hmm. of things that we want to inspire people to do in their time with us at Gonzaga. And partly we do that by mm -hmm. introducing them to other disciplines, to other fields, to other sectors, bringing that into the classroom in a way that can be valuable. Well, my personal experience at Gonzaga, the respective professors that are still there are doing that. They're doing that. Uh, they are uh, certainly training, uh, and in essence, it's a trade school. We are training lawyers to be able to provide services in the community, but it's much, much more than that. Mm -hmm. it, I think, as you're saying, you're training the whole mind. Mm -hmm. uh, not just what is necessary to pass the bar, so to speak, but uh, what is necessary to be, a, uh, I think, a, a valuable member of our society. Mm -hmm. Well, to go back to this topic of change mm -hmm. in higher mm -hmm. education, we yeah. are really trying to meet students where they are today. Mm -hmm. And that used, that's, you know, many businesses are doing this, right? Higher ed has been somewhat slow yeah. to do that. Um, but it's, it's a big usually, comment. Yeah, it's right? usually been, here's what we offer, and you come to us, and that's how we do it. Well, yep. we're reaching out to students now in new ways. On social media, for example, so I've opened an Instagram account, Zag Law Dean, uh, where I interact with students in mm -hmm. order to... Uh, showcase some of the great things that we're doing at Gonzaga Law School. Uh, so the hope is prospective students see this, current mm -hmm. students, alumni, and it's a way of, of staying engaged with the institution. I was just going to say the same. It, the fact that you've done that, though, is symbolically showing your desire to engage. But it, engage at all levels. Right. Engage with the student. With well, faculty? You know, when you and I went to law school, we probably applied to law school and we waited for that shiny packet oh, to come in the absolutely. mail. Absolutely. Uh, these days, students, you know, seldom check their mailboxes. And so we're having to find, you know, better ways to reach out to them. My hat's off to mm. our admissions team mm -hmm. that this year uh, uh, started communicating with our prospective students via text message. So students actually uh, are communicating with us via text which is, of course, the I've, primary I've actually heard mode that. of communication. Yeah, I've heard that, uh, that the millennials aren't emailing as much. And you're thinking, I yeah. thought email just got here. Right, so these, years these, are all, yeah. uh, these are all elements of change mm -hmm. in terms of how we think about our communication strategy, mm -hmm. how we think about our brand. It's much more interactive. Right. right. It used to be you, you turned off, you know, you turned over your, your brand management to one person or a firm that did this mm -hmm. for you and no one could interact with it. If we think of the interactivity that comes through Facebook, right. now, Twitter, 
Instagram. We're co-creating this brand with our students. Well, and you're you're in a position uh, with your faculty, uh, with staff, in yourself in your position to know the pulse. You have your right. finger on the pulse. So if that is uh, uh, contracted out, I think you lose a bit of that vibrance. Yeah, it's it's very interactive mm -hmm. and it's changing. It's not static as it was in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, where this is the brand, this is the message, and no one can change it until next season. Yeah. Right? We're able to, for example, um, test out certain images to see what what is resonating mm -hmm. with our audience. And, and what does that image exactly. say? Exactly. So one of the things that I've noticed coming and moving across country is that we're not taking advantage fully of the beauty mm -hmm. of this place in our advertising of it. We're not selling a big piece of what it is. I, exactly. Right. I, know, I mean, there, I there, exactly are, there are saying. students who, you know, when looking at their options for law school, it, it comes down to where do I want to spend three mm -hmm. years? You and know? potentially, and we could talk about this for a whole other segment, once you're here for three years and interacting with the community right. and engaging these law students, whether it is health care or private practice, governmental, they're actually doing internships, externships here. There's a good chance they're going to stay exactly. here. Exactly. So I saw this on, on a different uh, mm -hmm. seaboard part of the country in my own life. When I was graduating from law school, went to the University of Virginia, I decided to stay in Virginia mm -hmm. and practice in Richmond. Hmm. People thought I was crazy because I wasn't going to the big city of right. Washington, D.C. or mm -hmm. New York where many of my classmates uh, were going for their first jobs. Hmm. But what I found in this city of Richmond, which I wasn't from, had right. never really spent that much time, but my wife was doing a medical residency there, hmm. was that it was livable. It was easy. You could get to work hmm. you know, in, in, in short time. You had nice restaurants and, and cultural things to, to see and do. Potentially um, analogous to Spokane. Exactly. You mm -hmm. could buy a house. These mm -hmm. are the kinds of things that are really attractive to new attorneys. So if we can start to position Spokane in the same way, mm -hmm. uh, but part of that's selling the place. Absolutely. Right? Saying you can live here, build a life, build a family, and uh, be comfortable. What's one of the taglines? I think one of the chambers near... Uh, Near nature, near, near perfect. perfect. Exactly. I'm sure you saw it probably as yeah. you were searching the area. And I, yeah. I would wager that is true. Absolutely. Well, before we run out of time, I do want uh, to let individuals know where they can find your book. Because as we're talking about here, there are going to be trials and tribulations yeah. over your term here at Gonzaga. But there's a lot of excitement, a lot of hope, a lot of things, I think, going in the school's yeah. favor. But in terms of legal education and the nuances of legal education, where can uh, individuals find your book on IP, et cetera? Yeah, so the book is on intellectual property, which mm -hmm. I know many would then say, oh, I don't want to read it. But mm -hmm. the whole point of the book is that intellectual property is for everyone. It's not just some arcane legal mm -hmm. topic that's not of importance. In theory, some theory up here. It's, exactly. It's actually practical. Yeah, and so it's, it's, it's sort of telling the story of change that's going on in higher education. It's really a story about business. Mm -hmm and how institutions are using intellectual property in ways to further their business interests. And sometimes I make the point in the book, uh, they're using intellectual property in inappropriate ways. So I believe that higher education is a public good. Mm -hmm. I believe in the public interest in higher education, and that's why we're all working in this special sector. Uh, so what frustrates me sometimes is when an institution, not Gonzaga, but other universities, have used intellectual property in a way that right. constrains uh, the public good. So we're mm -hmm. talking about trademarks, copyrights, patents. Mm -hmm. There's, it's really a book about stories, mm -hmm. and it's, it's telling stories about how these pieces fit together in the broader business uh, sector to promote rather than inhibit. Exactly, and and so, you know, we talk about the patenting of of human genes, for mm -hmm. example, which has clear ramifications on all of us oh, absolutely. in terms of the health mm -hmm. uh, healthcare uh, services that we can receive. Talk about the trademarking going on by certain institutions of uh, different portions of their operations and how that affects businesses actually and can mm -hmm. inhibit businesses. I've seen this oh, firsthand, by the way, in my practice as an attorney. You know, often a business was very surprised to learn that a, a higher education institution owned a trademark or owned a patent mm -hmm. and was potentially going to enforce it against them. And they were saying, well, wait a second. We pay taxes to subsidize this state mm -hmm. institution, this public university. Why are they 
wielding this piece of intellectual property against me? Absolutely. And often that's a very valid question. So the I, book digs into that. I actually, I, I think that's a fascinating concept. If I'm, I think I'm correct on the fact that Texas A&M actually owns the 12th man. That's right. And yeah. of course, goes without saying, the they, Seahawks. Yes. So they have uh, sought to enforce that Absolutely. trademark against professional football teams. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting case. Boise State owns a trademark for the color blue yep, on Smurf an turf. intercollegiate playing field. They've used that to enforce against high schools. Uh, that are using colors other than blue on their playing fields. So some things that are, are not, you know, appropriate. Well, real life ramifications. Yeah. Well, we're, I'm going to have to have you come back and let's discuss that piece, intellectual property, as you said, patents, trademarks, copyrights, et cetera, a multitude of fascinating topics. Thank you, Dr. Rooksby, for being here. It's been my pleasure. I appreciate Ryan. it. Good luck. Thank you. Good talking with you. Business Talks is produced in Spokane, Washington by SpokaneTalksOnline.com, which is solely responsible for its content. Ask a question, recommend a guest, and hear this program again online anytime at SpokaneTalksOnline.com. Business Talks is brought to you by our friends at STCU and Well-Dressed Walrus. Business Talks wishes you good business and a good day.